Hi, I'm Alana. You're listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast. We are so glad you're here. I am with my co-host Jamie, and today we're going to be talking about how to stay focused when you pray, because getting distracted and having a mind that wanders is probably my biggest problem when it comes to becoming the prayer that I want to be. And I know it's a problem a lot of people share. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And we're going to start off the show with a word of prayer. God, we just thank you for this time to focus on distractions and being able to stay focused in our prayers. We just pray that this would not be a block that that causes us to be paralyzed in our prayer lives, God. We just ask that you would open doors through this discussion and through scripture and um, just everything that we talk about here. We just pray that you would open doors for us to become more focused and also remove any guilt associated with being distracted or having a hard time focusing in our prayers. And we just thank you, God. We know you're here with us and we just pray that your spirit would be on, on each of us today. Amen. Amen. So this is a podcast all about prayers. I'm sure you could guess from the title, but we like to start off with a verse of the day. So what's our verse for today, Jamie? Our verse today is Proverbs 24, 16. For though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again, but the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. I think that's a great one for our topic today about being distracted. That wasn't <laughs> a coincidence. I'm sure. <laughs> So the prayer get distracted seven times, they get back on track again. <laughs> That's right. I just, I love this verse for that reason. It's just so applicable to so many different aspects of our lives, but definitely to prayer. It absolutely is. Well, we've been having just for fun questions where we just kind of take a lighthearted look at some, you know, questions so that you can get to know us a little bit better and we can share a little bit about ourselves with you. And since we're talking about how it's hard to stay focused, um, when is the last time you spaced out? <laughs> oh, yikes. The last time might be a little hard. Oh, I remember one time. This isn't recent because my youngest is now eight. But when I had itty bitty, you know, toddlers, I would often do that thing where you're reading to them, but you're half asleep. <laughs> I did that several times. And so there would be times that I knew the book so well, I would just kind of be mumbling it in my sleep and forget to turn the page. And, you know, one of my kids would, would um, try to, you know, bounce me back. <laughs> oh, yeah. By jump, literally bounce on you to get you to. Oh, yeah. Up. Oh, for sure. Yeah. How about you? Yes, I've been there. Um, the most recent thing, which was really embarrassing on so many levels, but I'm, I'm going to be leading a Bible study through our church on prayer in the fall. And for some reason, I had it in my head that it was going to be the middle of October that it would start. And so just, I think it was just not even a week ago, and it starts in one week um, from Hi. the time we're recording this, a week and it, yeah, um, I realized it was starting in just a little over a week and that it was the middle of September. And I just don't even, I don't know what happened there. I'm, I'm usually, I, I can space out pretty readily on small things, but on big things, I usually at least have a handle on those, but that was a big one. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, that is for sure. Well, we're talking now about spacing out when you pray. And I'm sure most people, I'm going to assume most people have this struggle. If you don't, please jump on. We want to interview you and pick your brain and find out what your secret is. Because a wandering mind, like I mentioned earlier, is my biggest prayer struggle. And there's an absolute reason why this is one of the first topics we want to talk about in the Praying Christian Women podcast, because it seems like such a universal struggle people have. So give me some examples from your prayer life, Jamie. How does distraction look for you and how does it impact your prayers? Usually it's um, just being, going off on tangents. So I'll be, you know, sitting down and praying for a certain thing. And as I'm praying for that, like if I'm praying for my daughter, all of a sudden, It'll pop into my mind that preschool is starting next week and she's supposed to bring colored pencils and crayons, you know, and so, oh, I haven't done that. And so that little tangent stirs up and then I feel like I can't get settled back in to the prayer because I'm sort of 
distracted by wanting to remember that thing. Um, or very practically speaking, that same daughter could just come up and, and say, mom, I need such and such a thing. You know, it could be just a physical distraction. Those are the two biggest tangents in my mind and just physically a kid coming in and interrupting my prayer time. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. I think for me, a lot of what gets me distracted is my to-do list. I think that as a creative, for those of you who don't know, in addition to working on this podcast, I write Christian fiction novels. And as a person that God has given a creative mind, like I'm always brainstorming, you know, what, what could I do in this book or how am I going to get my character out of this? And so for me, it's hard to get my brain to turn off and to shut up <laughs> enough to really just come before God and focus on him. So on the one hand, we can say, yeah, everybody gets distracted in your prayers. What's the big deal? But it can turn into a big deal. It is a universal problem or pretty close to a universal problem. But why, why do we make it even bigger? Do you get what I'm saying? Like sometimes I feel like I would get so frustrated that I got distracted that it sort of turned into, I'm going to throw my hands in the air and say, why am I bothering at all? Yeah. And I mean, very practically, I think that's the voice of the enemy trying to discourage us. You know, it's the voice of discouragement, just basically trying to keep us from prayer and, and paralyzing us in our prayer life. Um, but I think our expectations, you know, it's a lack of grace for ourselves and expecting perfection or maybe even have un having unrealistic expectations about what prayer is supposed to look like or what you think other people's prayer lives look like or thinking you're the only one that struggles with distractions. So instead of embracing the fact yeah. that distractions exist, how do we deal with them? It's like berating yourself for being distracted, if that makes sense. I think that makes absolute sense. And I think some people think that the fact that they get distracted means that they don't have a gift of prayer, you right. know, and it does turn into something that's just easy to give up mm -hmm. at that point. And I think there's a huge mind shift change when you realize that distractions are not really the problem. The problem is the discouragement that snowballs. Because if you look at it practically and just logically, you're praying, you get distracted, you recognize you're distracted, and you go back to praying. And the worst that's happened is you might lose a few minutes of prayer time, <laughs> you know, but we get so caught up in this guilt about it that we just kind of give up altogether. Yeah, I totally agree. And, you know, I think of it as prayer is kind of exercise in training ourselves. We talk about this a lot, just we've had these discussions about prayer is training and prayer is exercise. And I thought of um, the example of doing sit-ups. Like, would you consider yourself a failure at sit-ups if you sat up and then you laid back down and then you sat up again and then you laid back down? Would you consider yourself a failure at sit-ups, uh, at <laughs> exercise? You wouldn't. So if you look at prayer as exercise and as training, a training ground, then you get distracted, you come back to God. You get distracted, you come back to God and, and see it as part of the process of, of growing as opposed to yeah. a failure. Mm -hmm. I was absolutely about to go to that same spot where, you know, I've said before in some of the books on prayer and stuff that we've done, prayer is a marathon. It's not mm -hmm. a sprint. And I do not like to run. I would not happily or probably even physically be able to run a mile. Like I can walk forever, but I, I probably couldn't run a mile. Now I could say I want to train to run a 5k. Oh, but I can't run a mile. So I guess I'm just not a runner. Well, that's stupid. <laughs> you know, you, you start by training and the fact that, yeah, I would have to start by walking some and running some. Mm -hmm. That's, that's actually good. Like that's the point. The point is that prayer is something that we need to learn and I don't want to say perfect, but um, what's the word I'm looking for in terms of just improve? We want to improve our prayer lives. It's not just this innate quality like some people are born able to sing and some aren't. Well, no, you can train your voice to sing. And so some people are good at praying, but I'm not. That's just a lie. 
<laughs> it could be that some people have more practice than you and that's the reason to be encouraged and not give up yeah and i love this quote that that has become near and dear to our hearts from saint francis de sales um, if the heart wanders or is distracted bring it back to the point quite gently and replace it tenderly in its master's presence and even if you did nothing during the whole of your hour but bring your heart back and place it again in our lord's presence though it went away every time you brought it back your hour would be very well employed I think that's one of the most encouraging quotes about prayer and distraction that I know, <laughs> because we hear verses like pray without ceasing and can feel really guilty that, no, I don't pray without ceasing. Sometimes I'm just sitting watching a movie with my family and I'm not really thinking about prayer at all. And we can feel guilty, but even training ourselves to be mindful of God's presence just throughout the day, no matter what we're doing, is a great spiritual discipline that can have a lot of benefits. Yeah, definitely. Well, what would you say is a practical thing that helps you to stay focused when you're praying? Yeah, that's great. Cause we definitely want to get into not just, yes, this is a problem. Everyone gets distracted. <laughs> so some practical tips are, let's see. Um, one thing that I have started doing lately is I'm really trying to make better use of the time that it takes me to fall asleep and to make that time prayerful. And I used to have this idea, but then I would feel guilty because my mind would wander off and I would just say, oh, I guess, I guess I'm not a good enough prayer yet. But I'm, I'm trying to practice this um, act of praying before I fall asleep without my mind wandering too much. And one way that really helps me is I, I go through and visualize the rooms in our house and say a few prayers for our family that are somehow related to that. So, you know, when I picture our kitchen, I pray for God's continual provision for food and the things that we need. And I thank him for what we have. When I picture the living room, it might remind me of a conversation that we had with the kids that day. And so I want to pray that that conversation could bear fruit or things like that. And somehow just having a physical place in my mind helps me to find something to focus on. And I actually go through the same route. I basically make like a little mental loop. I always start in the same room and that can help me too, because I can be like, Oh, where was I again? Cause yeah, there are times when I realize I've been daydreaming for 10 minutes, you know, but I can <laughs> What was the last room I prayed in mentally? And then I know that I can go on to the next one. That's really helpful. And I had a friend recently that, that talked about imagination in prayers. And for some people that it's helpful, particularly, you know, because we know that prayer goes two ways. You don't just have to talk to God, but we want to hear from him. And, you know, scripture is a great way to do that. But as we're meditating and, and praying, allowing blank space for God to speak can be helpful and he could bring scripture to mind or a hymn or a song or something but also this friend I was talking to was saying it can be helpful for some people to picture a person and this was really helpful when I was praying um, I just had a real heart for the refugee crisis last year I think it was 2017 and um, I I just pictured, I, I didn't have a person to picture, but I just pictured like, what would a person in that situation be doing right now? And so just using, using that type of image to allow God to speak. And so if you're a visual person, those kinds of things by picturing things could be really helpful to keep you stay focused when you just have blank space in front of your eyes when they're closed. Yeah, absolutely. It's also a neat one, that same kind of, I don't want to call it a trick, but that same idea is when you're praying for somebody who's sick, you know, like let's say you have someone that you know is in surgery or about to go into surgery, actually picturing them on the hospital bed, picturing the surgeons and nurses around them can be a really neat way to pray thoroughly for that because you're, you know, Yes, it's all in your head. We're not making a magic portal into the operating room, but it's still giving us something to visualize so that we remember to be praying for all the aspects involved. 
Oh, yeah. And like you said, as you're picturing that, things come to mind that you wouldn't even think, you know, that you would not even think to pray for. So that's that's really neat. I think my favorite yeah. actual process or trick um, was something that you shared, Alana, and it was the list trick where you write down your prayers on one side and then as a distraction comes up that you actually write that distraction down right. as you're praying. And if you go back to my example of, you know, praying for my daughter and I realize, oh no, I have to get crayons and colored pencils, I could just write that down in the margin of my prayer journal and then it's done. It doesn't have this hold on me that keeps me from going back to God. So I love that. I've used that. And sometimes even the distractions that we have can turn into the things that we're supposed to be praying about, mm -hmm. you know, so maybe you're praying for your daughter and her preschool. Well, you're praying for your daughter. You get distracted about preschool. So you write preschool in the distraction column, but then you realize, okay, I can pray for her preschool. I could pray mm -hmm. for her teachers. So another tip that really helps me stay focused in prayers is writing things out kind of in a list format. Not even necessarily, these are all the things I want to just check off and pray for, but sometimes I'll even start with a blank piece of paper and just write down in a list form what I'm praying for as I pray it. And there's something about having the pencil in my hand that even if my mind does wander, eventually I'm going to recognize, oh, I have a pencil in my hand <laughs> and that's going to remind me what I'm supposed to be doing. So I want to share another tip that's actually helped me in this um, journey to be more focused in my prayers at night. And that is to have something that you're holding on to. And so my youngest son is eight and over the summer he was at a friend's house and he made me this, you know, cute little beaded bracelet. And I keep it on the side of my bed and I'll hold on to it sometimes at night. And basically it's meant to remind me I'm supposed to be praying, you know, and there's, there's 10 beads. So sometimes I try to go through, okay, I want to pray for 10 people from church, you know, and so I could have my finger on one bead each and, you know, move along each time I pray. And sometimes I do it like that, but sometimes I just have it in my hand. And I'm still new to it enough that when I find that I've been daydreaming, I can realize, hey, what's this weird thing doing in my hand? Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to be praying. So even if you're not doing this at night, something like a new piece of jewelry or, you know, putting the rubber band around your wrist or any of these things that people use as mental cues to remember things that they don't want to forget can remind us to be prayerful during the day. And it's an excuse to buy new jewelry. <laughs> Visit prayingchristianwomen.com slash jewelry shop. No, <laughs> that's not an actual website, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Note to self, we'll start, we'll start that line up next year. <laughs> well, you know, speaking of reminders, for those of you who do have smartphones and things, which, you know, if you're listening to podcasts, is probably not a bad uh, guess that you might. You can even set up reminders. Let's say that you have an unsaved friend you want to make sure to pray for once a day. You can even just set a reminder to go off every day at noon or something like that. And I think often we have this mentality that if you don't clear everything out of your schedule and you don't start with 10 minutes of praise and gratitude and you don't go into a quiet place and kneel on the floor and shut your eyes and fold your hands and it's not effective prayer, but even just these quick prayers can be effective, not only because God hears us no matter where we are, but also because it is training us to be more mindful of God throughout the day instead of just during times that we've set aside to pray. Yeah, and I think another one that, uh, another helpful thing for focus goes along with that using your imagination to pray through rooms is physically going to places that you have on your heart to pray. You know, we've um, kind of talked about that before where, um, you know, for you, Alana, I know going like you and the kids at one point were cleaning the church. And so you would get to go room, room by room and it really helped you stay focused on each room and, and be able to pray. Um, and, you know, for me, I know in our church, last church that we were at before we moved, um, I would go in early to take care of the kids and I would, or to set up for children's ministry. And so I would um, pray over the nursery and, you know, just the little things that you would not think to pray for um, 
as you go through. And then I would go in the sanctuary and pray through the pews and, you know, the people that would be there. So just being somewhere and having something to hold on to, to touch the chairs and, you know, see the, the different parts of the classrooms in the church um, and not just churches, anywhere in anything, your kid's room, your home, wherever. Sometimes go through schools, you know, and they'll pray for the students whose lockers they pass, things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anytime you go somewhere, or it can even be as simple as each time you drive by a certain place, you say a prayer. You know, if mm-hmm. your route regularly takes you in front of the police station or the trooper station, if you're in Alaska like we are, then you can remember to say a prayer for the safety of the law enforcement or when you drive by a hospital say a prayer for the people who are in there. Setting up these prayer reminders is another way to just be prayerful throughout the day. Any other prayer tips for staying focused that we didn't mention, Jamie? I cannot think of any off the top of my head, but we'd like to hear any of yours. So share with us, yours being you who are listening, um, share with us, do you have any prayer reminders or tips of, for staying focused and, and fighting those distractions and, and not seeing them as a, a barrier, but, but just seeing them as, as room for growth? Absolutely. So we would love to stay connected with you. Hit subscribe so that you don't miss any of our episodes. If you've been blessed by what we're doing, we would love a review. If you could leave us a review on iTunes or wherever it is that you're listening to us. And now we're going to leave you with a blessing and benediction. May God pour out his love into your hearts by the spirit he has given you. May he satisfy you in the morning with his unfailing love. May he take great delight in you and rejoice over you with singing. May God direct your hearts into his unfailing love and Christ's perseverance, that these would forever be your support. And our benediction comes from Psalm 1914. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen.